Yeah. Good evening and welcome to the uh, June 7th meeting of the Hampton Beach Area Commission. And since Commissioner Rage isn't here, um, Commissioner Hausman, would you like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. And um, public comment. Um, just so the commissioners know that I did something without asking. Yeah, she's about to give you later. You're too delicate and polite. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure you'll get agreement at the table. <laughs> No, I said I did something without asking permission to do it, but I had contacted mm -hmm. town manager uh, Fred Welch and asked if he would have um, the two chiefs here and if DPW is available too, um, so that when we start making some decisions, if it's way off base or they notice it's a safety issue or, or just not doable, that they would interrupt us. So um, if it's okay with the um, rest of the commissioners. Are you okay with, if we allow them to interrupt us? They do whatever they the want. The two chiefs. Yeah. <laughs> they do whatever they want. The two chiefs and the town manager, actually, I guess. I'll open it for a public comment. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Mary Louise Woolsey, 148 Little River Road in Hampton. Last week, I got an email that told me that the bridge was out of commission down there, the number one red-listed bridge in the state of New Hampshire. So I called Commissioner Rage because I knew the commissioners would feel it's a problem, and he hadn't heard. But I called him, and he, I could, he didn't say it, but I could hear him thinking, my goodness, Memorial Day weekend coming up, what are we going to do? That close on it, Chuck? Yeah. yeah. And then I called Nancy, who promptly ran out of the house, jumped in the car, and dashed down to see what was going on. Uh, town manager uh, wasn't notified. I think the police department wasn't notified. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the state. But can't people at least notify local authorities when something like this happens? The next, my next thought is this. I see in the paperwork that the number one red-listed bridge in the state is due perhaps to be reconstructed in 2024 to 2026 with a $42 million put aside. $42 million this year isn't going to cut it if you're doing any building in 2024. I don't live at the beach. I, I, won't, I don't want to hurt Chuck's feelings. But I don't care if the bridge stays frozen all year. That's not my problem. But it certainly is our problem as a community. Is there any way for you, as a commission, to put a little pressure on our friends at the state who are either deaf or unwilling to take action. This is critical. This is critical for this community. What's going to happen if that bridge really freezes up? Now, Chief Ayotte did tell me that the firefighters, I guess, happened to be in the vicinity and they helped to rescue people off the bridge when it, when it froze in place. What are we going to do? And I did forward to you, Nancy, uh, Senator Shaheen's email, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, Mr. Welch also has, about the harbor and the bridge. And she's been great visiting and looking around and trying to get some help. What can we do, ladies and gentlemen, as a community to get off the dime and solve the problem? Well, I think uh, we will. I will make sure that your message gets sent well, I'm sure that will scare everybody. No. <laughs> <Well, clears throat> May I respond? I didn't hear you. It's okay if respond. I respond. Yes, you may respond. Yes. So, um, with, with respect to your comments, ma'am, I think that the deaf or unwilling people to take action 
that you really want to speak to is our New Hampshire legislature. Um, the department is extremely concerned about the number one red-listed red bridge in the state. And just today, I believe, the governor signed the next 10-year plan update. And for the last six months, that document's been in front of the legislature for the House and the Senate to move projects around, to advance them, to increase the scope, the budget, the sched or adjust the schedules. And um, unfortunately, there was nothing done by our elected officials to advance that project. So the department is working within the approved operating budgets from the legislature. We're working within the approved capital budgets from the <coughs> legislature. And we're doing everything we can to make sure that when the resources become available, the design for that project will be done. And as we do with many of our bridge projects, actually many of our uh, bridges are designed and ready and sitting on shelf, ready to advertise huh. ahead of when the 10-year plan approvals are in place so that when funding becomes available, we can move those projects off and advance them um, many years. But we don't control the budget at the agency. That control for both the operating budget to make sure the br um, bridges are maintained and open and operating are controlled by the legislature. And the 2024 to 2026 schedule is um, approved and affected by the New Hampshire legislature. Thank so that's, that's where the last six months of effort yeah, should have I, been focused I, at. I, on my own, am not going to have much of a dent in the legislature, but the beach is the cash cow for the state of New Hampshire. So some nice gentleman in Concord might want to put a little more pressure on the legislat uh, legislators to get something done. This is terrible. Miss Mary, yes. could, could I try to just keep it to the agenda yes. so that we can get some work done? But, but that incident, if, if the bridge hadn't frozen, I wouldn't be here tonight. Yeah. But I, just, I appreciate the call that you gave me. But I, uh, and I will I'm see concerned. that the message goes back up. And Mr. Rage is sure concerned. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Rich Sawyer, uh, Five Blake Lane. I'm the Chief of Police. I just want to correct one thing, Mrs. Rules, we made. The cooperate, I'm not going to get into the political issues between the town and the state. That's not my, my place here. The communication levels exist. The, the day of the bridge, we were notified. I made a notification to the, to the uh, manager and the board members just to let them know what was going on. Beyond that, people want to make out notifications. That's something else that they can deal out with uh, the commission and all that. But the communication level was there between DOT. It's always there with the state parks. Despite the issues we may have, communication and trying to get things done when things go sideways down here, it gets done. So I just want people to understand that, that when things don't go exactly the way they go, the, the actions that we take with the first responders, I think Chief Ayotte would support what I'm saying here, and between our state partners is outstanding. That is not an issue that we should be even concerned about. Things go bad, they're dealt with. So. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to um, give public comment on the, uh, anything on the agenda? Seeing none, I will close that. Um, I want to explain what your packet is, other than two reams of paper and two cartridges. <laughs> um, First of all, um, you've got minutes, which we will take up promptly, both the minutes for uh, May 10 and May 24. So I would um, entertain a motion on, let's start with May 10. Any, any corrections, motions to move it forward? I'll make the motion to accept the minutes. Do I have a second? Mr. Rage, thank you. Any corrections? Uh, questions about uh, those minutes of May 10? Seeing none, all those in favor? Uh, unanimous. I think your hand was up, wasn't it? I wasn't there, so I oh. shouldn't vote. Yeah. All right, so we have one abstention. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now for the minutes of the 24th. Do I have a motion on I'll that? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any corrections or questions or changes or anything that we left out? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Thank you. And before we actually get into the um, 
well, I'll finish going through the project. Your next packet that you have is actually the um, Excel sheet that uh, Mr. Rose provided for, for us on uh, where it appears in the 10-year um, plan, the language that appears in the 10-year plan. So I made a copy of all of those pages so you would have them right handy to make reference to uh, as you read through those. But beyond that, I continued looking through the, trans uh, the master plan, and I found a couple of more things in it where I found transportation uh, issues and language. Now, whether this is actually a further explanation of the initial piece, I'm, I'd have to go back and, and check that out. But those next two packets both refer to uh, transportation or safety or sidewalks or something that we are supposed to include in our master plan. And before we uh, start the discussion, I just want to remind us that after we finish this grant and talking about the, the parking and everything else, we're going to begin to look at uh, the environmental issues, which will include flooding and all of that. Um, I got a, uh, an email from uh, Jay, and he suggested that we may be interested in attending uh, there's three workshops coming up this summer. Um, they're put on by uh, the Seabrook Hampton Estuary uh, Alliance and the New, uh, New Hampshire uh, DES Coastal uh, Program. And the first one is on June 19, so you may want to make note of that. And that has to do with coastal flooding and property level resilient strategies. Second one is on July 17th, and that deals with options for protecting existing homes from coastal flooding. And the final one in August is on the 21st, and that's Smart Shoreline Stabilization Approaches. And all of those will be held at the Masonic Lodge. That's where they will be. And they begin at 6 o'clock on those given nights. So Masonic Lodge in Hampton? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you for clarifying that. And the other um, notice that I received is about the Hampton Beach State Park Community Meeting, uh, which is coming up this coming Tuesday, uh, June 12th, um, 5 to 6.30 yes. uh, at the Seashell Oceanfront um, to talk about what what has happened, what happened last session and through the winter and projections for this coming year. And Mike, would you like to add anything to that? Nope, just, you know, we'll have, we've been having these community meetings twice a year for a few years now and uh, we'll be there Tuesday night with our staff and, you know, look forward to hearing from people that, that come. Okay. We have Mr. Uh, Rose, Mr. Cleary and... Robin Baza. Robin. Thank you, Robin. Uh, with us again this evening. Um, now, Mr. Rose tells me he has an idea for us to proceed through this rather quickly. Now, if it goes against what I already have planned, don't be offended because we'll probably do it this way. <laughs> well, go ahead. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Should I be surprised? <coughs> Pardon me? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, in, in sitting down for the last couple of meetings, both at the public meeting on the 10th and again at your last meeting on the 24th, uh, clearly there's a lot of public comment that's coming in in response to concepts that were developed, and that's a good thing. And uh, I understand that this, co this uh, committee is working to try to figure out how to sift through all that and all the work that's been done over the last four years and come up with what, the end product, which is an updated 50-year transportation master plan transportation section of the Hampton Beach area plan, I'm sorry. So, uh, what we thought it would be helpful to do is provide just a draft. This is a draft, so if you notice that there are issues with graphics and things aren't as clear as they could be, it's because we cobbled this together uh, somewhat quickly in response to the agenda that you put out. Um, but using the guidance that you're looking at, uh, the different sections, of the study area of the, of the uh, transportation network in the Hampton Beach area. 
we thought it would, might make sense to uh, provide some context. And so what you're looking at there is what we were proposed to put together for each of these sections that you've identified and broken everything into. And what it does is it does a couple of things. The first is it goes back and looks at the work that was done and what recommendations were made in the 2001 uh, Hampton Beach Area Plan, which is the adopted plan that's currently in place now. The second thing that it does is it talks about what we looked at as part of the 2018 process. So based on the four years' worth of work that we've been doing, uh, what did we identify for concepts? And then finally, uh, the last portion is, and what are additional concerns that have come up over the course of the public comments portion that need to be taken into account as we advance whatever the plan recommends into engineering design? Uh, if we go all the way back to the beginning of everything, the idea behind this plan update was to kind of vet a little bit the ideas that were proposed in the 2001 plan, see where there was public support, and then carry those forward to make sure that they would actually work or not. Uh, and that's what we've done. But we can't answer all the questions. And the reason we can't answer all the questions is the grant that you would obtained was to update the plan, not to do engineering design. So we're limited in what we can do. Now, but using this as an example, if you take a look, we've just proposed, we put a little graphic in here. This is taken directly from the 2001 plan. You'll note uh, that the details were, we were talking about at that time, signalizing the state park entrance, adding a lane and then taking it away when, when the bridge was reconstructed, and reconstructing and signalizing uh, the, the intersection of Dustin, Ashworth, and Ocean Boulevard. If you look forward uh, into 2018, and granted, again, this is a draft, so all the graphics aren't lined up and as pretty as they should be. But instead of just an, a circle with an S around it, we actually went a little further and said, OK, if signalization is the option, this is what we think it might look like. Or a roundabout, this is what it might look like. And this is how well it may or may not operate. Now, granted, with all that, we know that there are additional concerns that have come up. And so what we tried to do is provide a listing of what those concerns were and why they were concerns. Again, the idea is when an engineer picks this up, they have the context for what has been looked at, what is supported, and if it's not supported, what are the issues that are leading to it not being a supported content. Okay, since this is um, five or six pages, and I think people need the opportunity to they look do. at this and digest it, um, I'll probably look to you when we go through these sections. And you can put your feed back in as well. How's that? But the votes will be taken here. So. Um, I'm sorry, could you say that last time? Pardon me? The last part? Well, the last part. The vote. I said the votes will be taken here of what we would like to see going forward. Um, before I forget it, we did get a, another letter today, and I gave you that letter, and that's from Michael Luba. So you can add that to your pile of letters. Um, <coughs> quickly, uh, Mike, do we have an update on the on the um, Treasury? Yeah, there was no change. The balance remains the same as it did on the 24th. Okay. All right. Do you have that number? Do you yeah, want I think it's uh, $9,018.43. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess I'd like to ask the commissioners um, if you have any general general comments for the entire area, such as sidewalks on east and west. I mean, something as general as that, and then we'll get into the specifics when we get to the areas. So, uh, start over here tonight. Uh, Bob, do you have any general statements that you'd like to throw out? Yeah, I, I, I don't see how narrowing the roads will increase the flow of traffic positively. So in the broadest sense, going from two lanes to one lane, taking the middle lane and using it as a turning lane <coughs> will, will probably reduce the flow of traffic, in my opinion, rather than increase it. Uh, Secondly, uh, I'm not comfortable with how we could make it the best decision on where the parking should ultimately be placed. 
when we don't have traffic flow information at this time, nor do we have any indication of sea level rises implication six or seven or eight years from now when this project actually will happen. So those things would concern me in terms of any decisions at this time. And we don't have uh, information from Boar's Head to win a con it of any significant detail, nor without knowing the bridge placement can you make a, a final decision on that end of the project <coughs> at this time. So my general comment would be a lack of specific edge information to make final choices. Fran? Yeah, I think we should uh, focus on the section from Ashworth to Ashworth, uh, basically the heart of the beach. Uh, and in addition to that, the, the piece uh, north of Boar's Head, from Boar's Head to Winnicott. Uh, I think a lot of the controversy exists, you know, north of the north intersection of Ashworth as to whether the parking's on the east or west and the treatment of Church Street. Um, and clearly, going back to the beginning, the, the issue of the bridge and whether, you know, the timing of the bridge versus the, the, the activity that may work there. So I think we, we need to focus our plan on the, on the things and the portion of the, the project that can, can, can proceed uh, as quickly as possible. Okay. Bill? Um, I think I have two general comments. The first is, and, and it's going to be different probably than the perspective the rest of you are sharing, um, but it's a reminder to all the commission members that this is a plan. This is not a design. So as, as Bob is talking about some of the specifics about sea level rise and of traffic flow, that isn't intended to be flushed out in all detail in this plan. Um, we're not intending to make a final decision on where parking goes or what final sidewalk widths are as part of this plan. And if we think that that's our goal as commission members, then we're not doing ourselves a, a, any service or the beach community any service. Um, what we should be doing, in my opinion, in the department's opinion, is giving some general guidance to the state of New Hampshire, through the legislature, through the department, as to what is supported by our commission in general concepts and what we have heard both um, amongst ourselves and from the public about what some of the bigger concerns are that we haven't yet addressed. And that goes to my second comment that I did see a, a peak of what VHB and William had put together and I think the structure of this, regardless of what we put in here for content, the structure of outlining what the 2001 plan stated is very important because what I heard in the public portion of some of our meetings, uh, the public was up in arms about signals and certain things happening, yet they were totally unaware or ignorant of the fact that some of these things are in the approved Hampton Beach Master Plan already. And um, we're not suggesting changing things necessarily. So the importance of putting the, the, the structure of this to, to make sure that people understand what was in the 2001 plan regardless of whether we agree with it now, is, is a, a baseline starting point that I think is important. Identifying things that we feel as a commission were considered and maybe supported is the second section, and then still outlining what additional concerns are that we haven't addressed yet. Sea level rise, traffic flow, the placement of where, the, where parking lots or sidewalk widths might be is something that will be very helpful to a design team or a consulting team that then is going to take this and bring it to a reality, regardless of what portion of Ocean Boulevard we focus on or what those improvements are. Right. <clears throat> yes, I think that um, because I, you know, I think we've seen that sh the residents surely uh, are very concerned about any plan, and um, we would like a plan that would be good for the visitors also. And I think that there's a lot to learn from what was in there before and what may be recommended. But I think what is most important is the road and what's under it, the sidewalks, and all safety issues. And as far as I'm concerned, it should definitely go to Winnicunit Road because that way at least the people that live in Hampton that pay for so much that's happened at the beach get to enjoy it. 
they do not go down 101. They do not come over the road or the bridge when it gets stuck. They're already here, and they would like to take part in some of what's happening, especially where their tax money is so important to make everything happen all the time. Thank, Thank you. you. Chuck. Well, I don't want to be so repetitive. I, I, I agree that the, we, we have to know where the bridge is going before we start changing a lot down that end of the beach. Um, and until that, that plan is out there, I don't think we can, we can do a lot because we don't want to do it twice. We've seen that happen a lot in, in this town especially. They put new sewers in and then they tear up the road the next year after they've already, and then obviously you're spending more money than you should be. Safety-wise, I think one of the biggest safety issues, and I hope the town and the state can figure out this whole sidewalk issue. Um, right now, there isn't a sidewalk, and I see all the time people pulling up in front of my hotel and in front of restaurants, and they just pull right onto the sidewalk because there's no definition of sidewalk and road. And one of these days, they, a little kid is going to run in front of them, and we're going to and we're going to be all over the news with bad press, and bad press is never good. And um, we don't want anything to happen to little Johnny running up and down the street. You know, we need to really concentrate a lot on improving the road and the sidewalks. And then, last but not least, we, we are uh, throwing money away if we don't do anything about the, the flooding issues where the roads are being torn up and uh, with with weather issues, the fl flooding on, on the roads. So then you're just going, you're starting to do. It's starting to be repetitive in redoing the roads that you've just fixed. So we have to we have to really work on that, and um, and then everything else should fall into place. I think. Um, I hate speaking up to Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I read your notes. Too. <laughs> <laughs> As I read the, through the, the the plan, you know, in the last week, I, I'm reading through and seeing what was there. And I'm thinking not much has changed in all that time and which means that to me that makes this plan and these changes even more important because we haven't done enough to to really make things happen I agree with Chuck on the uh, South Beach um, that bridge is going to land somewhere and they're going to spend a lot of money then and maybe that's the time to do that and maybe we don't need to spend a lot of money there at that point because we have people asking for us to spend money on the other end, right? Going through the main beach, everybody knows how I feel about the sidewalk and that middle middle sidewalk. I'd like to see that go away if it's possible. And then um, you know that I live on the fourth floor in the middle of that area from the, the statue to the jug handle. And there's no way that one lane will work there. I, it just, it's, it's impossible. What we have, while it is not pretty, is working. All right. I would love to see the parking move to the beach side. I think that that's much safer for the pedestrians that, that park there. Um, if it means we don't get full, two full lanes of, of cars to pull in, maybe one side has to be parallel parking so that uh, we have enough <coughs> lanes for, for a, uh, a breakdown lane and a southbound lane and, and, and two lanes to, to go north. I, I don't want to inhibit those people trying to go to the North Beach. I go there all the time. I don't want to be stuck in traffic at the Marine Memorial if I'm trying to go to Boar's Head. So there's a lot of good things that are here. Uh, I think that we, we need to make some changes and I look forward to that. So. Thank you. Yeah, my only is, you know, state parks, we will focus on improving the uh, access to South Beach, do some things, whatever we can do there to improve that is we'll be looking to do, so. Okay. Um, a lot of it's already been said, but, I mean, the sidewalks are a big issue. Um, the drainage, which might come more in the environmental section than, than this, but... It, that's key to the whole thing too, and there there is enough, <coughs> I mean, time or money that could be put into just that drainage thing. So, um, you know, on this grant, I'm saying. Um, so, um, but those are the two really important issues that I I see. Um, I mean, they've mentioned about the jug handle and the two-way traffic, and um, I I 
I think the hardest thing is is that we we've, we've got a plan that was was done first and and we, we were more or less trying to update that plan and uh, we have to, to work to that and it's a plan so um, we don't have eight thousand dollars eight million dollars to spend we've we're working on a plan so that's kind of my thoughts well, thank you. <clears throat> As I read through the uh, master plan, <clears throat> I found it to be full of ideas about how to, what would be desired at, in the area. And that's how I think this goes forward. And then the engineers take those ideas and turn them into a design. <clears throat> so some of the things that I think that are general statements would be, um, I would like to, um, the sidewalks east and west, all the way up. And honestly, I think, I have to agree with one of the gentlemen that spoke last, last week or two weeks ago, I think the master plan should include from the, from the, from the Northampton line to, to the river. I think we should speak to that. What gets done is one thing, but I think Route 1A is Route 1A, and it, it is all beach. We only have a very, what is it, how many miles? Three miles? In Hampton? How many miles to beach in Hampton? It's probably three and a half. Three and a half? Yeah. Four at the most. Okay. Well, I know that I know that Rye has eight, so we only had 17, so we got <laughs> you got to figure that out. <clears throat> the other thing, I uh, in, t in talking about uh, streetlights, the beach is, is busy three months a year, basically three to four months a year. The rest of the time, you can go anywhere. You could go up, up a one-way street the wrong way, and you wouldn't be stopped. But during that busy season, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I said. You, I said you could interrupt. <laughs> but I will say that I think that our police department moves traffic a lot faster than any set of lights could ever do it <clears throat> to get people off the beach. So then we may need, we may want to have lights at the end of Winnicott Road or something because of traffic there, or I don't know, some other place maybe. But when it comes to the main beach and getting people off, yeah. the police do the fastest job. That's, mm -hmm. that's my opinion. Um, I, I want to make sure that we have a bike path because biking is a popular sport nowadays. I want to make sure we have access to that. I want to make sure we have a loading area so that our businesses can uh, actually get their products. And when you're coming around the corner at Bull's Head headed south, I want to make sure that people that live in those condominiums have time to slow down a speck and ter actually turn in their driveway without getting bumped off the road by the guy behind them moving. So I think those two things are <coughs> critically important. Um, when it comes to the sea level rise and all of that, I think we should consider, um, is it pervious macadam that I want to say, Bill? Pervious macadam. And <clears throat> um, I don't know, I guess I'll save, um, well, I know I won't, I, because I know that there is a person in this room that knows what I'll be talking about. Um, and that is that um, when it comes to the drainage, we've got to figure out a way to get water out of the way. And the only way we can do that is to put it through some sort of a treatment facility. And there is someone in the room that is aware of a couple of places that that could possibly take place. So I think that we need to be thinking about that. And when we get to the, the uh, uh, another section of the road, I will tell you where I think that eight million dollars should be spent. So, okay, that's that. So let's start with uh, Ashworth Avenue. Um, that is a town road, but we are the Hampton Beach Area Commission, and we have four people from Hampton that sit on this commission. Five, yeah, four people and a, and a, and a business. Right and um, state. So we need to uh, think about that and work together. So do you have any comments? Uh, this time I'll start with Chuck on the section of Ashworth Avenue. I think um, the, the only issue is, is, is at the ends. 
um, down Ashworth going in, uh, to the bridge, I think we need to have a, a better, maybe have the lanes divided better and, and, and better turning access and maybe have something with where that little uh, island is. It's the only area I think that needs any, any extra work, any extra effort. Okay. Um, let's, can, can I ask, are we in pretty much agreement that any activity of any ch major changes in the area of the bridge and, and the state park area, that nothing should be done until we know where the bridge lands? Are we in agreement for that? Could I have a motion for, to recommend I'll make that, that? that motion. Do I have a second? Sure. I'll make it. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, All right. May, may yeah. I ask a question? Yeah, Harry? One of the questions that they're going to have when they're doing the bridge design is what do we want to do with Ocean Boulevard? And, we, and your well, answer is going to be it depends on what the bridge is no, going to do. No, no. If you wait a minute, you'll, you'll hear some more. I just wanted to make sure that we were not proposing that when any construction is, takes place in 2020, that we don't start at the bridge unless the bridge is in place. We start someplace else. She does that to me all the time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Bob, Ashworth Avenue. Ashworth Avenue is working fine. It's two ways. It's, I mean, it's one way. It should stay one way. Mm -hmm. If there's a way to have uh, uh, a breakdown lane there that could be also used as, as a bike path, I think that would be good. The sidewalks there are, are tough because you have so many driveways, so you're um, you're going up and down. Lots of times, people walk in that breakdown lane, so they don't have to go up and down all those those curves. Anybody has a problem with their knee or something, or walking along, that's that's difficult. Mike, just you know, as a visitor, I I think it should remain. One way, you know, two lanes, one way. Dean? Um, basically, following the, the work that was done down there already is, is working and is, is the two lanes heading south. Uh, I'm fine with it. Um, Bob? I think Ashworth Ave basically is, is fine. Some of the curbing is a little too high to step off, and I would think redoing the road would level that out. And perhaps some th new technology could be brought to bear on the crosswalks so they'd be more identifiable. An example of the thing Experience Hampton in town did up, uptown. Mm -hmm. It might be something to consider there. Fran? Uh, leave it pretty much as it is. Uh, look to try and accommodate a bike lane on there. Bill? Uh, yeah, it's. it's I don't know that the town appreciates the state making a comment, but I will to the to the point that the commission cares about bikes and pedestrians. If we're worried about bike lanes northbound on Ocean Boulevard and Ashworth continues to be one way southbound, then we need to accommodate bikes and pedestrians through that leg southbound. I agree. Yeah, and um, having been part of when when I first started as selectman, the thing we were working on, which was 14 years ago, um, was doing this, that part over, and I can tell you it was a nightmare that I can't remember all the details, but it was a complete nightmare trying to do something. There's a, no one wanted the uh, phone poles in the m middle of the sidewalks, and in some cases the sidewalks are very small, but there was no other answers, and that's why it ended up quite like it is. And considering how odd it is, and I think most people would agree that it's not normal the way that it is, uh, you really don't hear that many complaints about it. I mean, it does work. So I can't imagine why we wouldn't just leave it the way it is. And uh, there's too many, you know, low-hanging fruit that we can deal with before we go and try to change that. Okay. I agree that uh, it should remain one way south two lanes, one way south. <clears throat> I also agree that we need to try to make arrangements for a bike path. I think that's important going forward. The other thing too is on the crosswalks. It would seem to me that they were, if they were consistent, now I know that um, town manager told me that they changed things in the winter, but um, if you're headed south and there's a, uh, one of the leaded streets is driving west it would seem to make sense to me that the crosswalk would be on the north. 
that allows that traffic to come down and turn. And on Ashworth Avenue, I mean, up on Ocean Boulevard, the same, so that the traffic can actually flow. And it, it does and in a lot of the spots, but there's a few of them. F, I think F Street is the mm -hmm. worst one because that's the one when people are going into the parking lot. Right. If Crosswalk was on the other side, then it would, that, that would clear that street off. There's probably about three or four of them that are, that are wrong. The right. rest of them are right. And the, and the one, uh, streets going east would be just the opposite. They would be on the south so that people could make the left-hand turn to go on Ocean Boulevard. Um, then if, uh, I think it's maybe our responsibility to try to work with the town um, to see if the um, parking lot um, in front of the police station, during the busy season, if, if it, when it could empty out at night, late at night, if it could empty out onto Brown Road, that would, that would Avenue, be it. Yeah. Pardon me? Avenue. Brown, Brown Avenue. Avenue, I'm sorry. Brown Avenue. I used to live on Brown Road. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brown Avenue. And then uh, if, if there continues to be a parking lot across the street behind the casino, if that stays, Perhaps they could uh, redirect their um, exit, exit out Brown Avenue as well. And that may be a place for a traffic light, I don't know. Or one that could be controlled by a local police to make it stay green so people can, can get out. That's, that's my, those are my thoughts on Ashworth Avenue. So uh, we uh, want to take a vote on whether or not we believe that. Can I just that, say sure. one more thing? Uh, just because I think people probably have forgotten because um, the town did at that time actually take, uh, and it's the only time I've seen it before, you know, since nothing like this has happened, the town did take parts of buildings where they could and made them move. So, you know, the town did a lot to try to have more space there, but there were <coughs> at least two structures that were moved out of the road right, right of way. Oh, okay. You know, so I just wanted to bring that forward in case anyone has forgotten that. There was some things like that done, and that's what makes everything hard because it's hard to do, continue to do that. Okay, so um, because I like to accomplish things at meetings, I don't just like to meet for the sake of meeting. Um, are we in agreement that we would recommend that the, in the master plan that Ashworth Avenue remain two lanes traveling south? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Oh, who made the motion? I did. You did, and I okay. All right. So, okay. Is there any uh, anything else about Ash Ashworth Avenue that you would like to make sure gets into the master, master plan? Okay. Was that a unanimous? Vote? Yes, it was. I'm and sorry. Who seconded? Um, Dean. Thank you. I'll try to be better. Is there anything else that we want to make sure that uh, gets spoken about Ashworth Avenue? If not, then we'll move on to... Um, Did you add the bike path in the motion? I'm open to that. Yes. How does the rest of you, how the rest of you feel? Yeah. Who yeah. wants to make the motion? I'll make the motion that the bike path also be included in the motion. I'll second that. In the motion? Okay. And Fran seconding that. All in favor. The only other thing I would say on Ashworth, I should have mentioned it earlier, is when we came up with these idea of these bump outs on these streets, it does make it harder sometimes to turn in, to get out of the, the Ashworth Avenue because the going into the street is a lot narrower. And the idea at the time, I asked why they did that. They said it was to protect the pedestrians, and I don't think they need any protection at all because they walk wherever they want to do. So <laughs> if they were going to address those bump outs at some point, I wouldn't mind seeing them get cut back. You know, it would be easier to navigate off of a busy road to get onto the side road. Uh, I've, I've found that when I'm driving up to Chuck's place. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and do you want to include that in the motion as well? Sure. Uh, is anyone opposed to including that in the motion? I can't see changing anything that's there already on the sidewalks myself. Okay. Well, my, my thing is, if they were going to address it, I'm not saying to do it, yeah. If they got to, they were down there working on a particular area, I don't think it's necessary to keep it. Yeah, well, I that's don't. fine, but it's pretty vague for the motion. I don't think it really 
Well, I think that's a decision the town would be making when making another road anyway. yeah. type of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So, are we leaving I'll that? that? Thank you. Well, I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> so, to the motion we have, it is uh, two lanes south, driving south, and a bike lane. Is there anything else that should be in that motion? Sounds good. All right. Let's take the vote again. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, unanimous. Can no, I ask, do, yes. Can I ask a process question? Sure. So I understand you're having a conversation now about what everybody would like to see happen on each of these sections. What are the next steps? We get through all of these sections and then what? You're putting it all together. Okay. So I, I guess there's an opportunity to save some time, I guess, because you're going to have to review all of everything that we develop for the plan before it's adopted. Mm -hmm. And that adoption will actually take place with a vote. Mm -hmm. That it, if you just want to share your thoughts and concerns, we're diligently writing these down over here. And I know Ann takes excellent minutes. So if you just want to share what your concerns well, I are. I honestly feel better that by voting on these things that I know that I can expect to see them in the master plan. I, I think his point is you're going to have to we're going to have to vote on it again, right? And and our minds may change between now and when that second vote is taken, which leaves William and the consultant in a tough position at the very end to try to go back and potentially revise a vote that we've already taken as we look at what we really said to say is that what we really well, we meant? just did we just changed that initial vote that we took exactly that's that's that's, that's, that's right. the point yes. that's so, the exact point and how long and, did it take us to do that and, and the other the other well but this is before we've invested the effort and dollars in doing the write-up um, the other point is as it relates to Ashworth, all of the concepts that we've put forward for the public presentation to date have been what you're talking about so so yes we we are listening and that is the work that we are doing so. okay now, the bridge to um, Ocean Boulevard, Dover Avenue area. Chuck. <coughs> Any? Again, we have to wait and see what, what's going on there. I think yeah, but, it, but no matter where the bridge think, lands, right. are there certain things that you would like to see? Oh, just better sidewalks, bike lane. It's, it's pretty, it, there's just no, uh, there's no definition there. No, I, I'm not asking for one. I'm just asking for what you would like to see included. You'd, li you'd li like to make sure that there's a bike lane at the sidewalks. sidewalks yeah. Um, well, yeah. I don't want to no, miss sorry. him. <laughs> um, I, I don't know that I'd want to spend an awful lot of money down there yet until I see you know where that bridge is going to land and what's going to happen after that. I think we can just make the exit off that bridge part of that plan for whatever amount of millions they're going to do. They can just say, well, we're going to take the bridge and connect it to the where this plan starts. Okay. Yes, I would agree with Bob, I guess, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I cause we were, we were working on two concepts down there too, right? There was one was an intersection and the other was a roundabout. I know the roundabout is 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 this way, but um, I, I'm just something needs to be figured out here with that the entrances of the, of the beach and, and also the the back into the marina. And I know we had came up with a, a lot of ideas in that that neighborhood of the Ocean Walk and that type of thing. So um, I think there needs to be something in in that congestion to make that work. So I, 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 mean, I agree with the sidewalks and the and the, the bike paths, but yeah. you know this is where the bottleneck is too. So. And I think we heard from the people down there, they really don't want that opened across from the state park. Mm -hmm. They would, would like to see it remain a three-way area. Right. Coming over the bridge, going to the bridge, and going into the park. Mm -hmm. And I think we also heard from them that uh, having an access lane headed north, a pull a, a, a designated lane to turn into the park, both going both north and south. So I, I you know, I think that that area, which is what we have yeah. now, right? Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Right.
Yeah. Something that's another thought we had. could be done about Staff the flow of traffic into the state <coughs> park long before this plan is adopted. July 4th and so I would I encourage the state to at least put in two booths and two to collectors to get that moving. Everyone says the same thing. That traffic backs up into Seabrook all summer long because of the inability to handle it into the park uh, quickly. Uh, and this, I would make a comment about the bridge. If the bridge is done, I would hope there'd be a sidewalk on each side of the bridge. I've gone over that bridge on dark nights where people are fishing off the side of the bridge, standing in the street because there is no sidewalk. And it's pretty scary. When they wear dark clothes, you just don't see them. That, uh, I know that's not part of the immediate, but I'd like to see that thought about. I want you to know I asked Mike to um, check to find out how how often the state park is filled 100 percent. Yeah, it's probably eight to ten days a year. 100 mm percent, -hmm. yeah. And I also asked him to find out um, if we made that three lanes, um, how much parking would be taken away. Yeah, I, you know, we'll, I think we're interested in doing something which which we did last year. We can create lanes going in so we can get mm -hmm. traffic in faster, but, you know, it'd be a temporary thing. We're not looking at a permanent uh, roadway. roadway in there doing that. But so you're, t you're thinking about leaving the roadway the way that it yeah, is? Yeah, but we can, t we can do that. We can create two lanes to get in to, to move people a little bit faster. We can do that ourselves. Okay. And we did, and right. we will. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fred? <clears throat> well, I think from a planning perspective, we, we need to recognize conceptually that we ultimately are going to have to deal with, you know, the entrance to the harbor, the entrance to the park, uh, Harbor Road and Dustin Avenue uh, and what that, you know, scheme looks like. I mean, some of the stuff we, the, the consultant presented, I think look pretty good, but they, it doesn't make a lot of sense going forward until you know where the bridge is going to be. But I, I think those basic issues still need to be addressed, you know, the, the park, the, the, uh, the harbor and the two streets, uh, Dustin and uh, Harbor, Harbor Road. So uh, from a planning perspective, I think we should recognize it in the plan, but not necessarily uh, come up with something specific at this point. Mm -hmm. Bill? I would echo Fran's comments. And I think, again, the sidewalks and the, uh, the bike path, and definitely something has to be done about from what I hear, I don't really know a lot about what the problems that are there going into the state park. Although I'm just going to throw this out there because I heard numerous people say that there needs to be, you know, the, there are ways like they do at football games when the cars just pull them all in and then someone goes with an iPad or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's even practical. It can um, be, yeah. Yeah. We're looking at stuff like that and, yeah. and opening, you know, our hours opening and, earlier on certain, you know, holiday weekends and. And I'm amazed at how many people said that. Yeah. So uh, I thought I would throw that out yep. there. And then, of course, the Ocean Walk thing. I know from being selectmen that that has been an issue that's been brought up over and over and over again. So something needs to be done just to sort of tuck Ocean Walk in there and make it a safer thing. Again, it's a safety factor. And then um, I'm not sure if it's exactly Harbor Road, but is Harbor Road a uh, private road? Mr. Welch, yes, yeah, I think that you need to take uh, consideration of why would you be bringing in a lot more traffic onto a private road that I believe they plow it and everything themselves. So, you know, we don't really need to be driving traffic into some that is actually belongs to those condos. Everyone that wants to go to the harbor, they have to ride right through their condo. Does it belong to, is it a private road all the way out to the street, or is it a private road just to where the pink condominium is? It's a private road to where the state right away begins, which is out next to the Ocean Walk. Okay, so it would be in front of the Ocean Walk, it would be state. In front of the Ocean Walk is state and all the way out to the end of that, that dead end road. What used to be the bridge road. Yeah, okay. And the people of the condos are pretty concerned about it, I will tell you. Yeah, I, I'm, I heard that when I was knocking on doors mm -hmm. and delivering things. And it gets, people forget that that's the way it is, but, it, you know, all of a sudden, once it starts up, everyone starts complaining and they come out of the woodwork about it. Yeah, I, I, the other thing that I heard, too, was that people that 
because that corner is open and people shoot through the parking lot at Ocean Walk and then try to go down, it causes problems. So if that was blocked off, you know, mm -hmm. that would probably work better. Mm -hmm. So I guess what I would say about that area is that I would like to see um, turning lanes for, for the state park, both north and south, and I would like to see a road separate from, I mean, uh, a road, separate from the travel lanes for queuing of boats, for the queuing of boats, so that they are off safe, and, and not just a very short one. It needs to be of, of a good length, because sometimes they get six, eight boats lined up down there, what, 50 feet long? So. <coughs> um, and the crosswalk at, cro even though uh, the people that live there said that they did not want an opening directly across from the state park. They did not want cars coming in there because it's too short a turn. They do would, would like a, a lighted crosswalk so that people that are staying at the state park in the, in the, the, the RVs. The rented spaces. Yeah, yeah, the RVs, they can walk across and, and take the fishing boats out and that kind of stuff. That comes into the Board of Selectmen a lot about yeah. a crosswalk there. Yeah, and if it's a lighted one, that would work. Um, okay, is there any action that you would like to take on that? Um, anything that you would like to say for motion or not? Or are we just letting them take our ideas and filter them through? I would make the recommendation yeah. that they are, they're listening to our ideas, let them filter them back to us and we can, okay. we have ultimate authority on the final decision. Okay. The final so, so they won't be upset if we change it at the no. final? Okay. <laughs> no, and I, I think you'll find that when you have an opportunity to review the draft that we circulated that all of the concerns that were just expressed are reflected in that document. Thank you. I do appreciate the fact uh, to have material a little bit ahead of time so you have a chance to read through it and digest it. Um, this is not the legislature. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this will also give us that opportunity if, if, if they take away what we have tonight, yeah. when we go to schedule Just our next it. event, yep. they can make sure they have that information to us ahead of time so that we can edit yeah. that digest would be good. it that with, good. within minutes next yeah. to it. Yeah. And, and those, those uh, Dover Avenue to uh, Havel Street, anything in there? I think as that as being the gateway to the beach right now, what we see, you know, is not really uh, attractive to me. You know, there are no, no sidewalks really, and then between the sidewalk and the road, it, it just there's sandy patches there. So I, I think we could have wider sidewalks, but I think we could also have some parking. You know, there's there's the parking parallel parking spaces along that road that some of those people would probably like to utilize. You mean the people that live there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They have no other place to park. Some some of them don't have any place to park. Correct. Is that that true? Is that Fred? correct, Fred? Yes, sir. And yes, ma'am, that is his, his statement's correct. Some of them do not have a place to park. That's why they don't want sidewalks there. Just so, let me throw this out also because I think it's pretty it's valuable information. Is when the plan was done the last time, that was the only area that wasn't addressed. And it wasn't addressed because the people absolute, first of all, we ran out of money. And we were looking <laughs> to first to do something to save. But those people absolutely did not want to have sidewalks, particularly on the side streets. But I think, that, you know, the, it's a new day. And that there needs to at least be sidewalks on Ocean Boulevard. I understand on the side streets because they do want to keep the parking and there's a lot of driveways. But on Ocean Boulevard, you know, that I think is the densest part of housing mm -hmm. people in the whole town. Yes, I definitely feel it should be sidewalks. So Ocean also. Boulevard, you know, you have to, you, know, you really have to have a place where you want to get those people. Up. Yeah, and it might even take some of them off of River Street and some of those other streets if they could walk up the boulevard and it was nice and lit. Be much safer, I think. Yeah. Does it need to be on both sides, or can you just? I think one side. Would one be, side could be wider. Yeah, and that, mm -hmm. that would be enough. Yeah. Satisfying. And, and maybe perhaps it should be on the the beach side, because mm -hmm. now you're not having people walking across all the the streets that you know uh, Q Street, P Street. Right? So, 
and that's the people, most of the people are living on that side anyway. Mm -hmm. So they can come up to the top of their street and take a right and go to the center. Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think it would, personally, I think it would look better if you didn't have on street parking there, but if people that own places there don't have any other place to park, I guess it's kind of tough to take they're, it away from them. They're parking in sand pits now. Yeah. But are there sand pits their property, the state property, or the town property? I don't know that answer. State. State, state property. State. Thank you. Okay. Um, anything you want to speak to there? Um, well, Mike? No. Nope. Dean? I think it's been said. No. Nope. Bob? No. Nope. Okay. Nope. Bill? I think that they need to make sure that these people do have parking on their property. And if they don't have property uh, parking on their property because they like to sit in the sun in a chaise lounge, then too bad. And there's a lot of that that goes on in Hampton, and we deal with it all the time. And we're going to be dealing with it uh, at our meeting with the uh, planning board this week. Okay. These same issues. All right, then I guess we can leave it to you guys to figure that one out. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully, huh, Fran? <laughs> okay. Um, Wake up, Brandon. <laughs> well, you know, you come up a little further, and you see the, the street go to the sidewalk, and then you can have the town sweeper come along and clean up that whole area every day. That's, they do that in the rest of the beach. So if you had the street that went to the sidewalk, the town or whoever cleans that up, it would just make that whole entrance to the beach much more attractive. Okay. Um, Havel Street to Mrs. Mitchell's. Uh, Bob. Hello. I think at a minimum there has to be two traffic lanes going north. The sidewalks on the business side are basically non-existent. They all have to be replaced, but in doing that it has to be taken into account that businesses are using part of that space now for business activities, and I don't know who owns the what's in, the, in that area. I tend to agree with Bob that the middle sidewalk south of the pavilion may or should be altered or changed or eliminated. It seems redundant. There's a major sidewalk on the beach, and if you put a major one on the town side, it would free up some space either for beautification, traffic flow, or parking. Uh, beyond that, I, th I think I don't see this part of the project is loaded with complexities that are controversial. Fred? Yeah, it seems to me the, the issue is what the final cross-section looks like. Um, and, and I guess I'd break it up a little bit from Haverhill to, say, G Street, which is the north end of the, of the, the large parking lot, the state parking lot, you know, right at the, the playground. Um, you know, maybe once you go north of there, the section has to may have to change a little bit. Um, but clearly, you know, the west side sidewalks have to be substantially wider than they are. The issue that Bob raises is whether that middle sidewalk stays or goes. Uh, and that helps you on the west side sidewalks and makes allows you to make them wider and also allows you to, to talk uh, to provide a, a loading lane that you talked about if you get rid of that uh, middle sidewalk um, you know it just gives you more space on on the other side of the street so I, I guess the, uh, what I'm saying is it you know you really we need to come to some uh, agreement on what that final cross section looks like uh, and include in there is is the bike lane you know again I, I, the consultant gave us, uh, I think, at least three op options on the bike lane. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, but that's, you know, what I see is what that, uh, once you get north of um, D Street, you know, the, the road opens up tremendously and, and uh, again, what you do with that is, uh, is pretty straightforward, but those, you know, the west side sidewalks, again, uh, you have a lot more flexibility, I guess, in that area than you, than you do further south. So. Yeah. Um, so mine is more personal than probably department 
opinion, although I'll, I'll say that I don't think the department would have any problem with that middle sidewalk that, that a couple of people are referring to um, not being there in terms of trying to create a cross section that works for all the modes that we're trying to get through there. I think the other thing that we would support, um, much to the pleasure of the police chief, are the barricades. And I don't know that we should, we've discussed them enough in here. Uh, I think it's more of a coordination and communication uh, issue. And I think a lot of that, as Rich said earlier, um, communication is good when, when things um, need to happen. And I think looking at pedestrian safety uh, is, is critical and, and the barricades are something that we might want to discuss a little bit more in the plan as a way of uh, yeah, I think I, I agree with you because they worked extremely yeah. well last year by yeah. channeling the, yep. the pedestrian traffic. Yeah, I think the department would be very supportive of it. I think, you know, the misunderstandings, whatever you want to call them, last year um, behind us. Okay. But there are permanent opportunities that could work there. So it's you've, the, the position has changed a little bit. Uh, I think the, there, there's going to always be an operational concern depending on the type of barricades you put up. If some of those barricades are out in the roadway or in, set up in a way that uh, they could be hooked on to by a vehicle that's passing by, that could then create concern, safety concerns for the, the pedestrians. Is there that's any, the issue. Is there any way that you could have those holes put into the outer side of the sidewalk so that the holes are in the granite that goes along the edge and rather than in the road? I think that's a design consideration. Pardon me? The holes you're talking about. Well, don't you have holes that you stick them in or do, do they no. sit flat? No, no. We, we purposely went with the flat ones. The reason we did that is the area that we put the fence up, if we have a fire or something where we have to get apparatus in, okay. right. very easily a team of officers could grab one section and quickly rip that out of the way. If we, anchor, you're talking about anchors. Yeah. They are designed with the holes where you can anchor them. Um, I wouldn't advocate for that. Our, our part of the flexibility we wanted to have is our ability, when we have those congested areas, that we could quickly get that fence out of the way. As we progress with the plan, I agree, I agree with uh, DOT that if there's a more permanent way to, to, to establish those barriers, that would be great. Uh, you see in a lot of communities when you travel to tourist areas, they're using bollards. Like the state park area in front of the stage would be a great place if we could get some funding to do solid bollards there. Yeah. So if a car did try to cross over the sidewalk, there'd be a hardened issue there. So that would give us another level of protection. Uh, right now we have the fence and the primary reason for the fence is to keep the pedestrians out of the roadway and channel them to use the crosswalks. If we can enhance the security level by using more permanent things, I would agree that's the direction you should research. But for right now, it's a good temporary fix to keep the traffic flowing. But anchoring them, though, I wouldn't recommend that. Okay. All right. Yeah, um, I definitely uh, hear nothing but positiveness about the, um, what did we just call them? The, uh, the fencing. The fencing, yes. Mm -hmm. And. I hear that all the time from a lot of people, and I know that uh, Chief Sawyer has worked very hard, and I guess he got a lot of his ideas from down there in Nashville, Tennessee. It seems to work very well. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, I think that, you know, if we're going to, as we've talked all, all the way around, talk about the uh, um, bike lane, you have to make a commitment to the bike lane so that it's continuous. Um, I think that's important, and I'm all for taking the middle sidewalk out if necessary. I'm in, I, I'm in, I'm supportive of taking that middle sidewalk out as well, um, maintaining the bike lane. I have questions about whether or not we should have parallel parking in that area because if you have a bike lane outside of parallel parking, that's not a good thing. Someone opens that door and nail someone so and I think that's what you have to look at yeah so what would we lose for parking if we we and really can't lose parking that's an issue yeah. Yeah. yeah we really can't lose parking on in the main part of the beach I think it's it, it would be it, it just would be a disaster but can it be added in another spot right there people like that convenience of the parking yeah the, the street side parking street side parking, parking. Yeah. yeah that's the first well, to go everywhere I, I i really don't think you can lose parking if we took the sidewalk out could we put the bike lane on the inside i don't know maybe 
if you're going to have that parking, I don't, I don't see how you can take out the sidewalk if you have parking there where the people need to get out of their car and on one side or another. And it doesn't have to be a full sidewalk, but the yeah, thing you got to remember sure is have full head, head, in, head in parking in the big, they call it central parking lot, right? Mm -hmm. You have head in parking there, and those people come in with their cars, and they and there's a sidewalk. They go over that point. So if there isn't a space there, so there still has to be a space, maybe not as much, not as a sidewalk, but there still has to be a space there. So you get higher. Yeah. If they're going to take the sidewalk out, they're going to have to take the road, put it to something, they can make it higher. Right, but they ha that has to be looked into because... I look, <laughs> I look at those spaces and I, and I see, you know, two things. Um, uh, there's a lot of businesses on, along that strip, so you're able to pull over and go check in those businesses, so those parking spaces are very convenient. And the other thing, you know, um, as far as the state is concerned, my guess is those parking spaces are twenty, twenty-five hundred dollars a space for yeah, the season. Popular, yeah. And we're the first ones that are always asking these guys to do something. I mean, I, I all the time I say we need something for the sandcastle, and frankly, we don't want to pay for it. You know, we want to use your your room upstairs, and we don't want to pay for it. So I think that we have to try to work with them in, in, in certain cases, you know, to, to not take away those valuable spaces. How many are there, by the way? I don't know, I think 70 or so, I think is up that up, up the whole way to the seashell. So from the beach, Something like from that, the yeah. chamber yeah. office up to the, yeah, uh, or south yeah. to, to uh, yeah, P Street or whatever, losing those spots. And that's when you when you said G Street, it's actually H Street where that okay. where the playground ends. Yep. So you're, you're still going to need some access to some type of sidewalk for people going to the playground. Right. So we have we can't really eliminate that area. Sandhut. Yes. <laughs> Chairman Stiles, if I could speak to the issue of bike lanes, yes. and I and I not as the public works director, but as a bicyclist. Um, We'd rather ride on the right side, on the right lane, if, and deal with cars that may or may not open their doors. And the reason being is if somebody does open their door and there's a break in traffic, you've got an out, you've got an, out, you've got an exit. You can go into the travel lane. Um, regularly we do, and we move at the same speed as uh, vehicles. To be on the other side, or to be ride on the left side northbound, um, you're dealing with pedestrians. Pedestrians that are looking down at their cell phones or, um, or may run out from a business. And to be honest with you, I'd rather deal with the occasional car than I would with the pedestrians. Uh, we don't want to ride up against, the, um, up against the sidewalk side. They're again, pedestrians. Um, it would be more tragic if it was a pedestrian cycle accident than it would be, um, you know, a pedestrian or a bike versus a, the, the door jam. But to be honest with you, every time any of us ride down there, it's not so much the cars that we're looking out for, especially in that section, it's always the pedestrians. And as you get above Mrs. Mitchell's northbound, it's the pedestrians that'll, that'll literally step right off the, the, um, the, the sidewalk. And um, that's a lot of times where the, the real major safety issues are. So sharing a bike lane with work parallel parking, not really an issue, uh, almost in some cases a good buffer. Another thing on the, the parking lot. The Thank, you. Um, Thank you. They're out mornings. I, they, I never see any of them out at, after a certain hour when the, the beach is busy coming down the main boulevard and I'm, I'm there I watch and in the morning there's tons of them out there but uh, I, I, you, you very rarely see any bicyclists out in the afternoon late morning afternoon they just yeah. they just don't want to deal with the traffic and the people it might be different though once they have bike lanes <coughs> but there are a lot there's a lot there's a there's a definitely an increase of uh, bicyclists lately you constantly see like 10 and 20 of them at a time and I, and I also think that, you know, taking that middle lane out would be good, but someone had mentioned, well, half, half of a sidewalk, and you can't do that because, you, I mean, a sidewalk has to be a proper width and that type of stuff. So it's either, it's either in there or out of there. 
if we take the sidewalk out of <coughs> there, people would walk through um, on the other side of the, the buildings, right? Well, we have, uh, if we're taking out that middle lane, we've got we've got the 12 foot sidewalk that's on the boulevard, I mean, on the ocean on south, the and then we have new sidewalks <coughs> that would be on the bus on the west side. So we're kind of saying trade the but middle. But if, if, if I were north of um, where the um, parking people are, you know, where the parking, the state park parking people. Okay, by the, say, the playground, yeah. yeah. No, no, the north side. Where the, where the sandcastles are. Okay. All right. If I'm there, I can walk behind that building, right? Correct. You walk mm -hmm. in front of the yeah. band shell, okay. and you keep going yeah. by the side, okay. by the uh, right. playground and so forth. So you wouldn't have any. So people going to the playground, where would they park and, and walk? I think the sidewalk would start at the playground. At the south end of the play playground? Yes, it has to. They have to be able to get to it. I mean, the entrance to the to the playground are, are on the the east side of the. the it of used the, to be, on, in so the there's end. there's we no. It. It's all fenced in on the on the road side. You can't it, you can't get into that area, correct? Yeah, you'd want to keep that sidewalk because lot and lots of times you'll see people standing there watching the kids, talking to the kids through the fences, and you know that's actually a nice nice place to walk. You know, it keeps some some of the cars away from the playground too. So the only middle playground we would be talking about, a middle sidewalk, would be from uh, H Street South. So, yeah. Okay. And what about um, handicap parking? I know that there's th there has been a change there in recent years. It might be five or six years ago it changed, but I've heard a lot of people comment. Uh, you know, did it get taken out of there? No. Nope. Or walking disabled can park anywhere. Yeah, that's yeah. That's what I always tell them. And not pay. And not pay. In any space, as long as it's empty. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, Ocean, Ocean Boulevard to, uh, intersection at Ashworth to Boar's Head. What's that on this side? Suck. Ocean Boulevard, Ashworth to Boar's Head? Um, Ocean Boulevard. I, I think the, I, I, people are, uh, disagree with me, but I think that the the middle parking is is dangerous. I think we need to do something with that. And I know a lot of people disagree with that. Uh, I don't know how. I don't know what the solution is for people jumping over that fence in the middle of Ocean Boulevard to get to the beach. You know, Someone actually. suggested. One of you guys of making a higher fence. Yes. Yeah. yeah, making like a forty foot, forty foot, <laughs> 40, <laughs> forty inch, forty when inch. People fly through that parking lot. <laughs> they cut across that. I just think it's 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 the most unsafe part of the t of the beach. You know, it's, it's, I I don't know. I don't. I just don't like that whole setup. But I know a lot of people are against that. So I I'm just gonna let it let it slide by and let you guys figure it out. Yeah. I look at it now, I think it's unsightly to have those two, I will call them those barrier fences. If you move the parking to the, to the beach side, you're going to lose one of them. And then if you, uh, and then you'd have a whole new fence, which I'm sure would be much better or maybe different than the one that we have now that goes along the side of the road. Uh, I just think it'll look a lot better. Uh, and I think it'll be a lot safer for the, for the kids you know, that, that come in, park there, they go to the beach. Now they're in that middle parking lot, and even there, you know, when they get out of their car, you know, they're, they're standing around, you know, um, talking while the parents are unpacking all the stuff, and there's a lot of traffic going on there. So I think if we move it to the other side, it'd be a lot safer. And then uh, if we lose a little bit there, I, I just think it's imperative. I can't vote for anything that doesn't have two lanes going north. If the people can't get to the North Beach, then I'm not in favor of this plan. Mike? Yeah, I, like Bob, I, you know, I, I get it. I think it's a safe, you know, the middle parking perhaps isn't the safest thing down there, but I also, hear, you know, the view, people driving along the, you know, is an important part of that, no doubt. So. Dean? 
Well, we seem to be spent a lot on the parking thing, but I, I do know in talking to um, on the safety issue, I mean, when, when that new parking lot was built, you know, south of the playground, um, it made designated entrances and exits. And I know some people don't like it because they're, they're tight, but what it's done is it's, it's, I think it's, it's helped in the safety end of it. You can see it over there, Chuck, at the, yeah. at the hotel. But once they're full, they're full. Um, and I think what they were trying to do here was is to create almost that second tier or a second part of parking where there's a, a designated in and a designated out so it, we wouldn't be dealing with jumping over the barricade or, um, you know, or, you know, people driving straight through, you know, to avoid the traffic in the two barricades with a parking type thing. So um, to the extent of where to put it, you know, if, if you got rid of one of the barricades and work something in on that end, um, I guess that's where I'm, I'm at. The question is, is where? Um, but to the extent of one lane north and one lane south, um, we've, we, we heard it loud and clear, but I think we know it, that people don't want to drive south from, you know, from the condos or whatever up at, you know, Rocky Bend and come south and to turn around and come back because we heard it, we heard and we, we probably all do it too is we, we take a, come out and we take a left and we go north right off and I think that's, that, that's a big, big concern that we, we heard and, and I agree with so maybe I've rambled on. Yeah. <laughs> Bob. To me, the safety issue should be paramount and that whole current parking arrangement is intrinsically unsafe. <coughs> it starts at the Ashworth Hotel, where you, when you leave Highland Avenue and try to go north, you can't see any of the traffic coming up Ocean Boulevard until you're in the passing lane on the north side. People frequently go up the middle of the parking lot, up to Turd Street, to exit the beach at Turd Street, which doesn't work very well when you've got traffic flowing on the roadway going left onto Turd Street. Uh, so it just doesn't seem to work. I think putting it on the beach side would enhance the safety dramatically, but these are trade-offs. Ultimately, I personally, and this is a personal feeling I have, there's going to be a wall that's going to take that view away eventually to save the beach from the ocean. So leaving it as it is is probably the least best option. And not addressing the issue at Highland De uh, High Avenue and the boulevard leaves one of the significant safety risks in place. There have been fatalities at that intersection. There have been multiple accidents there. And so that's what I, all I have to say. Um, we need to keep the two lanes in each direction uh, in that section. Uh, and I agree with uh, the issue of moving the parking to the beach side. Uh, it's not safe now. Uh, people are out forever climbing those barriers, you know, with little kids, with coolers and chairs and all the rest of this stuff. And, uh, it just doesn't work very well. And it's not, it's ugly. Uh, you know, it doesn't look good. I think we have an opportunity to make it a much better situation. Bill? Yeah. Uh, I agree with the safety. Um, <laughs> moving it to the east is yeah, certainly going to improve <laughs> the safety. Um, I guess I'll speak more to the scenic part of it, though. Um, putting up a 40-inch or 4-foot fence over the center just takes away even more. Than no, the you can see too. It's still more metal. It's still a distraction. Um, and I would say the same thing, in my personal opinion, if you left it the way it is, unless you're in that right-hand northbound lane, you're not seeing anything scenic to the right of you anyway, because you're looking through traffic, you're looking through cars that are stacked up, you're in queued and such. Um, that scenic, we, we, we talk about the scenic nature, the people that have a scenic view are the people in their homes on the west side that might be up on the first floor, second floor, or higher. Um, but if you're, if you're in a vehicle on street level, um, I don't see how you're going to lose anything scenic by moving parking to the beach because you still have to look over car roofs and stuff 
the same as you would if you're driving southbound today, the same as you would if you're in the left-hand northbound lane today. Um, moving, it, moving the parking to the right improves the safety and, and really doesn't impact, in my opinion, anything scenic at all. Right. Well, you know, clearly this is not what the people said, is what people feel here. The people feel much different. Um, they feel about the scenic, that that's the most important thing. Um, and, uh, you know, it, I think we're going to have to decide if we're going to listen to the people or not, because I think the people, it's 90% uh, percent don't want the uh, parking put over on the beach, and maybe 10% don't have an opinion. But I recently went to a party at Warren Kelly's uh, uh, condo that he built that's near the, to the north of um, the lighthouse there. And there were at least 20 people there that live in that building. They all felt very strongly about that they don't like the idea of moving the parking to the beach. And uh, the, every, that's a, every time, you know, people wanted to bring their opinion to me and that was, that was clearly what they were trying to say. Um, I don't feel as strongly about it, except for I feel strongly about that the people do like to drive along, and you do look at the ocean, and I, I drive that way all the time to go to my house, and I always look at the ocean. Uh, it's a lot different drive when I go the other way, uh, where there is a wall. Um, you know, and a lot of people in this area like to have uh, SUVs, because if you have an SUV or a truck, you can look over the wall. Uh, I don't, so I, you know, the only time I ever really do see the beach is when you're driving in this area. So clearly at, all, at the meeting that we had, the people voiced a strong opinion that they want that view. And uh, you know, this commission has to decide if they want to do what they want or if you want to do what the people want. And I think the people clearly feel different. Now if you can come up with safety issues, uh, factors that will make it better, um, and I will tell you, people do use the middle section to drive, uh, to cut, a, you know, to, to do whatever, to try to move along. Uh, if you're leaving the lighthouse or whatever and you have, are in the middle, you might drive further than you probably should, but people do it all the time. Also, one of the factors that that property is all used uh, very much year-round by all the people that live around there. And some of them don't feel that if it is closer to the ocean, it's going to be less usable during the winter time. Um, again, this is not a big factor for me because I don't live in that area. Uh, but I think the biggest problem is that people think they can drive along there and see the ocean. And that's clearly what I heard when people talked, that that is what they don't want to have taken away from them. Well, I agree. I agree with you. Um, I don't think we should move on okay. to parking to the east side. Um, that's a precious view, and I would like to keep it that way. Now, is the parking in the middle safe and people speeding through it? I think we can work to correct that. You can put an end to the parking at different locations so that the cars have to turn out. If, there's, if they drive in and there's no place to park, they get out and they go down, they can go into the next one and leave spaces enough so that people that live on the west side of the street, um, just south of Boar's Head, and want to go up to Winnicott, will be able to cut through one of those places, make that turn, and not have to come all the way down and make a turn like that. I mean, it, well, we heard the woman that lived on Q Street or whatever it was, she said she's, what, an hour and a half going around the block? Because you have to go around that block down there? I, I, I am. I feel very strongly that we need to maintain that view. That's just my personal opinion and maybe a vote of one, but that's, that's how I feel. Um, Could we reach out to our chiefs and see what they say? Pardon me? Could we reach out okay. to our chiefs? Sure, the two chiefs, yes. Thank you. Speaking from strictly a safety perspective, the parking should move, be moved over to the east side. The arguments I hear from the people about the view, I would really prefer that while you're driving on a road, you meet your obligation as a driver <laughs> and focus on the road, because yeah. that's your obligation. But you do carry passengers <laughs> who are looking I, at I it. understand that, but I would rather 
you miss that pretty view and avoid hitting the child. That's where I'm coming from with it because that is a dangerous area where that parking is in the middle, both on the road and also in the middle of the parking. The problem, the idea of blocking at each end, now you're having people darting in and out of traffic again, which causes problems for us trying to manage the traffic flow. The other problem is our egress off the beach. Right now on a Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon when we have that heavy traffic, that intersection at Church Street, I know because I come out on many of those afternoons because we're shorthanded, it takes three to four of us to manage those intersections mm -hmm. because of that configuration. Um, I appreciate the view. I grew up down here, and I've, I've had that view most of my adult life. But if I have to pick between safety and aesthetics, I'm going to go with the safety. As far as not using the parking because it's on the east side, geez, I, I had a busy winter, and I, I know I was on TV a lot telling people, please don't come to the beach during the storm. And I'm okay with that. If the waves are coming over and crashing into the parking lot and people can't park there during a storm, that's helping me out because these people get in the way and these are the people we're trying to keep away. So the storm chasers that want to come down and, and view the pretty storm, if that parking gets eliminated from them, I'm okay with that. that that's a problem for us. Um, so the arguments I'm hearing not to move it to the east are counter to safety. It's the I people it. it's that the live view. there that want to park there also. Well, I'll go to your point, Rick. If you have property at the beach, you should have your own parking. Mm. They do. I totally agree. So please don't keep trying to throw things into my mouth. <laughs> I'm just, no, I don't I'm using your point. I agree with yeah. you. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of people there. They live in all those condos and the this and the that. I'm just telling well, you what I people, hear from people. I think people. it's the people that come here to just drive along the beach and look at the view. Mm -hmm. I do, yeah. the, I do the same thing in They Rye. put grandma in a car and they drag her over from Manchester and take her for an ice cream. She's not driving the car. Right. And that's what they want to do. But uh, I do understand that there's a problem. I'm just, uh, I think a lot of the problem too is people go in that middle section all winter. People uh, pl have it plowed by either they have it plowed or they dig it out themselves. Uh, it's just something that's vastly used. And, and if we're going to have a rule about the parking, I'm all for it. So please, I would just as soon make some rules and enforce them for a change. Chief, Chief, Chief. Can, I, can I ask one question? Just back, keeping the parking where it is, okay, mm -hmm. and going into the concept of what that parking lot is down by the playground, where there's one in and one out. Yep. Would that work up in that middle section where there it's might better, only be... It's better than what we have now. Because, I mean, why, why, I don't know why it was ever designed to have so many ins and outs of that thing. Predates my time, I'm, I'm not sure. Both of us, but but people but getting on, coming out of their condos and the roads that are down there. Yeah, well, you could, ha you could reduce the number of... of could reduce it, but you, you could reduce it to it three. All. You could reduce it to three. You know, another thing that is, I grew up here for 55 years, and I will tell you that the parking, as far, particularly at the area of Church Street, used to be much worse 30 years ago. There were much, uh, the police were much more active at that time. There was much more of a backup. Uh, even as, as when I first moved here, probably 35 years ago, uh, there was a backup on the 4th of July always in front of my house. There hasn't been a backup in front of my house on Ocean Boulevard for probably 15 years. So the traffic is actually not as bad today as it was way back. I don't know why. I'm not the one that it does. It has to have some way of how they've directed it, but there isn't as much of a backup. There's never a backup that goes as far as my building, but there used to be on a regular basis. Let me catch the uh, fire chief. Sure. Your comments? Jamie, I got fire chief. Yeah. Um, to echo what Chief Sawyer had said, we had looked at the plan, and as it was presented, the, the east side parking, if we can call it, along the beach side, that was presented some time ago. Um, I said, this is a brilliant idea, please do it today. The reason I said that is because the northbound side of Ocean Boulevard and the pedestrians that have to cross it, with the idea that people are looking at the ocean and viewing it, they're turning their head to the right, but pedestrians are crossing from their left side, the driver's side of the vehicle, while they're looking out the passenger side. Typically, they're crossing not at crosswalks, not necessarily all at crosswalks. 
Um, I understand that we do have some barriers. They're, you know, about three foot high. People step over them all the time. They're coming in the middle of the road, down by the statue. And as they're crossing the road, they're, they're walking into a very dangerous situation. From a safety perspective, along with what Chief, Chief Sawyer had said, I feel that the, the parking on the east side will certainly bring down the pedestrian issue when it comes to that. I fully understand that there's, there's parking issues with the residents that, that live in that area. Um, but they're also, they're year round. The, the, the people that we keep talking about is people who come to view this area. That's when we have the, the highest density of population for parking. And that's also the highest pedestrian population. So to look out from a safety perspective, to, to weigh in with what um, Rich said, I think that for us, we examine that from parking on the east side is reducing the pedestrian traffic and the potential for injury. Well, been, instead of those, um, <clears throat> that metal stripping that they have there now, if you put up a 48 inch. Nice looking. Like a um, fence. Uh, not, I mean, the plastic, you know how the, Bernie's bar, if you look at what he's got around, sure. if you put something up like that, people can see through it. So it's not taking away the... It's still crossing two lanes of traffic. But you're not going to stop, you're not going to be able to step over it if it's that high. Right, but they'll still be crossing two lanes of traffic. So the northbound lanes will still continue to be driving northbound. And if you're on the inside, typically, not always, but typically, you'll see that the people who are on the inside lane, they're looking to take a left to leave the beach area. They're going to be going down 101 or wherever they may be going. So in essence, those cutouts in the parking, in the central parking, they're looking to go through to leave the beach. As a means of um, evacuation or egress, to, to leave the beach, we already have choke points there at Church Street. Uh, to continue on further up, we'll, we'll continue to do that. Our primary areas, and I know that there was a jug handle that was put on a map talking about that, trying to get people to leave. Our primary areas of people arriving and staying, they're crossing at all of the openings. But they're crossing to go to the beach. That's their intent. If we put the parking on the same side, then we eliminate the problem with the hazard of people in the street. And are there statistics of where there are more traffic and more people getting hit by uh, uh, vehicles? Because I'm the people that I know that have been hit, and clients of mine, it's always on the southbound lanes, and it's usually because of when the sun the sun is setting or whatever, and you get blinded, come headed south. It's not so much on the ocean side that I know, and I've 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 had at least two clients <coughs> have had their lives changed, going on the southbound lane and getting hit by a car by people blinded by the sun when it's setting. I assume is. Do you have statistics if there's more people hit on one side or the other? Uh, I, don't know they, I don't know what they are. I can research that. Yeah, that would be like interesting, I think. Well, I, I do agree that we need to maintain two lanes uh, travel north and south. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I think that the town needs to be thinking about um, and the state um, is the Church Street situation. You've got two lanes coming in on Highland Avenue to get to the beach from 101. You need two lanes going out. So there may be some way that you could begin thinking now about dealing with some of the people um, that maybe 10 years down the road, 15 years down the road, you'd be able to take some property to make that two lanes going out. I've heard it discussed, so I know it's not impossible. Um, I'm just throwing that out there to um, mm -hmm. think about. Um, we've got a church there that just sold a big hunk of property. Um, we're going to see major building there if we don't start thinking about trying to work with the people there and be able to take some of the property to widen that street. What did they sell? In Portsmouth. Pardon me? Oh, not You're the church. About no, I'm talking about, uh, I thought, I thought the, that That's church. Help. Pardon me? No. 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 I thought they sold a, some, a piece of property there. Just the Maybe somebody's talking about it then. <laughs> but anyway, um, I think we need two lanes to get off the beach there. So if you wizards can think of something, why? Well, it would be a good idea. Okay, well, it'll be interesting to see how you folks write that one up. Who's <laughs> <laughs> well, head to Winnicott? Well, Boys head to Winnicott. Anyone want to speak to Boys head to Winnicott? Bob? Well, I don't know that there's been enough expression of plan
to speak in any detail other than you need two lanes of traffic flow and you've got a hideous topography problem where one side of the road is five, six, eight feet higher than the other side and I'm, uh, I'm not quite sure <laughs> how they resolve that one. The thing I would point out about from Boar's Head to Winnicott is there's a seawall there. So long ago the decision was it's better to protect the home than the view. So we've had that see well, in fact, through much of your effort, you were able to get the thing rebuilt. Uh, so I would take that into consideration. I just have, I would have nothing for to say on that section. Fran? I think the intersection at Winnicott and, and, uh, and Ocean Boulevard needs to be addressed. It can look very much like the intersection at High Street. Uh, the situation now is just is mind-boggling. I go through it every morning going north and come out of Winnicott and go north. I mean you can't really, you got to look back over your shoulder to see what's coming the other way. Uh, and it's a relatively easy fix um, from an engineering st standpoint. Uh, and then the drainage issue, it, 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 it needs to be addressed in that area uh, from uh, Boar's Head to, to Winnicott. It's, again, that's fairly straightforward. Um, the other thing is is yeah. the treatment of the yeah. parking there. The, the parking is in the center there, um, and it's the same kind of issue you have further south with people crossing, and, and, and there is that uh, uh, elevation issue. I, I think if you look at perhaps putting the parking on, on the beach side there, um, where there is no view, it may very well accommodate that elevation change. You know, you, you may be able to get the parking up where people are much more easily able to, you know, access that, that uh, east side sidewalk. So. I think the, the elevation change in the center parking area and your ADA issues on the, the steps to the sidewalk along that whole stretch from Boar's Head North is something that needs to be addressed. Yeah, and I feel that um, the area north of Boar's Head, uh, you know, where the water just pools up and is intolerable, um, and where there's a, someone selling their house for 20% less, it's listed 20% less than what they pay taxes on it just because they got to get unloaded in a hurry. Uh, that's what's happening there. Um, and someone's, you know, they, they've basically, I think it's, it's a shame that it's affecting their life now that they're going to be going into a nursing home and they, you know, they have to just unload this house in a hurry. And it's because their whole piece of property is turned into a mud hole. And that area where there is opening, where you can look into the marsh, um, is that prevents the water from coming off the road and instead it pushes it through people's property particularly hers because it's the lowest and a lot of the water is running off from condos that have been approved uh, those big yellow condos which you know I love them and I love all the people that live in them but the water drains out when they put new wood chips that end up in that lady's yard um, because none of the drains work so the drains are a major major problem um, and I know that DOT has worked hard uh, to try to, uh, too, too much time went by and now the lady couldn't make a, a clear decision in her own mind because she would have liked to have done what DOT wants to do now but the time has run out for her and now she's going into a nursing home. Um, you should see the people pulling into her yard uh, when they look at the, uh, that it just start, went on as a multiple listing. Today there were at least 40 cars pulled into my driveway to look at her house. Uh, it's, you know, and it's, it's, it's just unbelievable that how her front window is recently broke from the water pushing up from the puddle that goes there. And uh, the sidewalk really works to hold that water from getting into the marsh. And like the guy from DOT said, you know, if we could go through her yard, we wouldn't have to get a, you know, a permit um, that would take year, you know, a long time to get. Um, but now that ship has sailed for that woman. Um, 
but basically those drains just don't work. Uh, speaking about little Johnny getting hit down at the center of the beach, you should see the people that are in wheelchairs. Uh, lately, the big thing is, along with the bicycles, are all these women that uh, they will go in caravans with baby carriages. And I don't know what would happen if it was if it starts to rain when they're out with their baby carriages, because they have to put their carriages into the middle of the road. They can't cross over because of the bump up. Uh, it's just a nightmare, a complete so nightmare. It definitely needs to be addressed. Yeah, it definitely has to be addressed, and um, it needs to be. Uh, a, a, what do you call ad? ADA. Yeah, it should be. I can't imagine that the, that the state can't uh, make sure that they are doing what's right. How can you expect anybody else to do it? Chuck. Um, I, the entrances on, uh, to get to the beach, it's, it's the stairways, it's, it's just crazy dangerous. And, um, I, but I don't know what can be done. It's so high up there. I, I don't know. But I think that's an area that needs to really be figured out. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how it can be handled. Bob. I think this might be the easiest area of the whole plan to fix, because we have four lanes of traffic and we have two lanes of parallel parking in in the middle, and we don't really have a traffic problem up there. So we could probably have two lanes of traffic, north and south, have a have a breakdown lane. There may be something on the. Uh, the beach side where you you know those steps aren't necessary and we could have a, a, a gradual walkway up to the sidewalk in in a couple of areas and that and then on the housing side you know we could have wider sidewalks so we're not worried about you know the, the people you know that are walking along most of that traffic should be you know with the strollers should probably be along the on the, the ocean side anyway because you're not going up and down all the time and they do walk there year-round too yeah. It's mainly people from I don't know, aesthetically. This would be a very pretty, I think, a much better change, you know, than than what we have there now. Dean, uh, I, I I'd agree with everybody. I think it's an area that there is more square footage. I mean, width-wise, <coughs> to to move things around pretty easily. If you put the parking, you know, on the beach side. I mean, the one thing that we did here every meeting or two was drag racing. Uh, in that that's area. a big problem, and that's kind of new. And that's, I don't know if it's today or today's thing or whatever, but that has to be addressed, you know, create a roadway that avoids doing that. And, you know, with the light up at, uh, or some type of lighting um, intersection, I mean, a, a car intersection mm -hmm. light up, it would kind of would make sense. But I think we've, it's like Bob has mentioned, there's enough room there to, to reconfigure things, I think, pretty simple. Because Did you see we're not playing with a view as much. In yeah. 1924, the article that was in the paper that was called Death's Corner, um, that sidewalk, even then, not the sidewalk, the corner there at Winnicott Road, uh, Cheryl Lassiter that wrote something for the uh, uh, Historical, yeah. Historical yeah. Society, they, you know, it was a problem even then, and it, it was a lack of lighting, they said at the beginning. Mm. Because you, you also you know realize in the traffic flow per se once you get past Winnicana, eventually it it, zing, it goes into two way traffic and you don't seem to have a problem there. It's where so. the traffic merges. Right. I've twice been in car accidents. One time someone hit me, and another time they slid into me. Well, I think we need to maintain two lanes, um, north and south, from Boar's Head to Winnicana, and have an intersection there, a lighted intersection, but not cut off King's Highway. Make sure that the south end of <coughs> King's Highway stays open. Even if they have to go up on a Connaught Road. And if they want to go to the beach, they may have to go down and go out First Street. But um, I agree with Fran. I think we could do something with an elevated parking area there that would take care of that differential and have, have <coughs> multiple parking there. Get it all out of the street so that in the street you just have um, your, your travel lanes. Um, I also think that people have been asking for at least eight years that I'm aware of um, to have some sort of a facility there. And if you put um, a very small, low-profile um, 
three sto a three unit bathroom. You could have two unisex and one family. So you've got the changing room that I, I mean the changing thing that I just saw and heard on TV about some guy complaining because he didn't have a changing station. Um, but if you have a unisex, I mean, anybody can go into them at any time. Um, and if you put that on the northeast corner, on the east side of the street, it will accommodate the walkers that are walking the wall and the people parking in that parking lot. So I think, I think you could gain a lot of parking area up there. Now, it may not be prime parking, but it's parking. And if you want to go to the beach, you can get to the beach. Um, I think there's great opportunity to make good changes in, in that area. I really do. Um, all right, so we'll go Winnicott Road to High Street. Um, start over here this time, I guess. Chuck? I think it's, it's, it's fine it's the way it safe. is. I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bob? I, I have the same comment. There's plenty of room there to do all kinds of things. You know, I think that people would be better off without having that the fence in the middle. Yeah. The one thing I would say all along the whole plan is that we need to have better marked crosswalk. And maybe they shouldn't be just six feet wide, maybe they should be ten feet wide, you know, so people can see them. And if you can see them as you're walking down the street, maybe that might entice you to walk a little further to get to that crosswalk. And then if you're coming up the road and people are standing in them, I think you'll see them. Yeah, I noticed that they, I don't know what kind of paint they used this time, but when I drove back from the beach, at uh, the bridge the other day, those sidewalks just stood right out to me as I drove up the street. Um, I thought the DOT had done a great job on those. Mike? Well, I think it's good. Dean. I, I agree with the, all the other comments. Yeah. Bob? I basically agree. I think it's in the best shape of the whole strip. No. Yeah. Basically, uh, I think maybe some of those, there might be some areas in there where the stairs are uh, lacking. Uh, there shouldn't be any stairs. What, going down to the beach? Oh, oh from uh, the going wall. on to the beach? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, I think there's, and I think that people from, I'm not sure which, but there's a girl down there at the, that, that works with the state. She's been trying to help Meredith. people. Meredith. Yeah. And uh, they've been very happy to deal with her. And I agree with Bob what he says about the crosswalks. And if you had the crosswalks opposite the uh, openings at the beach. Yeah, that's a great idea. You know, if, 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 if that's where you place them. Um, High Street to Northampton Line. Any comments on that? Everybody's happy with the way that it is? I think it's important that you recognize that I think um, we've forgotten just in general that that was always the intent to keep the whole stretch, Hampton to Hampton, in the plan. Yeah. So it's That's important why to I, recognize it. I just think it's important to yep. include that in some sort of language yep. to mm -hmm. make sure that it's, that it's not for, not forgotten. Now, the one thing I would like to say about the uh, drainage, I know that in October, and this is totally outside the grant, so uh, in October, uh, they're going to start the engineering for um, Route 1A. Um, I would hope and I'm passing this on to you, Bill. I would hope that they would spend time figuring out the drainage. And as I said earlier, um, I know that you have to have a treatment facility. And if you do nothing else, if you can take care of the drainage uh, all the way from High Street down, um, and you'll have to make... Um, connections with the with the town to take care of all those back streets off of Ashworth too and find a place for maybe you've got two separate places where you put it through a, a treatment but if you, if you can treat the, the stormwater and get it off the roads um, I, I think you're doing a good thing and I would hope that would not do what happened last time um, when we I mean, I probably shouldn't publish this, but <laughs> I know that the drainage by uh, Havel Street goes out to the ocean, and they've got, the, whoever the engineer was that set that up, they've got three doors to open to take the water off, off of the, the beach. You can't open those doors under eight feet of sand. Uh, 
it's just you just can't do it. So unless there's an opening for those doors to flap open, that water's not going to go anywhere. It backs up and goes right down the street and in the guy's basement. So I'm hoping that they will really spend some time looking at the drainage to get it off of the, the streets and not in Rick's backyard and in somebody else's backyard. Um, and if it has to go through treatment now, um, I know that there's knowledge here in town um, on how to help that work. So um, maybe when they're doing the engineering, you can have some communication with some of the townspeople um, to how to take care of that. And personally, if you spent the whole $8 million on getting rid of the drainage, and then the legislature has to go back to get money <coughs> to dig up the road and put everything else in, I would be happy with that. All right, that's enough, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> I can get off of my soapbox. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I just think that, you know, I mean, everyone down here is troubled with the drainage issue, and you can't put in a new road if you don't know where the drainage is going. Kind of makes sense to me. Yeah, I agree. Okay, um, now, Mr. Rose, <laughs> <laughs> you have sat there and been so patient and listened. Um, this is new for him. He's asleep, I think. No, he's not asleep, but quiet and patient are not in his vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even smiling. <laughs> the curses are coming. I feel them. You haven't heard much that you haven't heard before. Is that what you're going to tell me? Uh, no, I don't need to say it because you know it already, right? Yes, I know that. <laughs> Thank you, Chiefs, for coming in. Uh, you're welcome to stay for the conclusion of this, but I really appreciate you being here <laughs> when we were trying to uh, figure this out. They're just adjusting. <laughs> so, uh, what is our next step? So the next step is to write the plan up, to draft, draft the transportation portion of the master plan. Uh, my expectation is that it will look a lot like it does now with an introduction to what it is that the transportation section is talking about, update any data or changes to infrastructure that's happened since the 2001 plan was adopted, and then go into a conversation about each of the sections as you've laid them out in the agenda. A through H uh, in a format that looks very similar to what I handed out at the beginning. Okay, uh, and I, I think what Bill said earlier, if, if when you get this written up, if you could email it to me, and then I'll ship it out to everybody so that they'll have a chance to uh, actually read it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, as long as we have more than two weeks' time to try to prep something in between meetings, we can do that, absolutely. Okay, so what would you, um, when would you anticipate having this ready? Uh, it will be probably, if we're looking at an August meeting for you folks, that would be the best time to target at this point. Early August? Uh, regular August meeting. <laughs> uh, we have to be careful because we may be having a special town meeting at that time, so. Um, when is that, Fred? Don't quite know yet, but it'll be the in last the, week of August. In the 20s, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I think... Well, I, our meeting would normally be the 23rd, right? Our, yeah. mm -hmm. our meeting would be the 23rd? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the town meeting's going to be on a Monday night. Oh, I'm fine then. A delivery will be a Monday night, oh. and I believe the town meeting will be on a Friday night. That's, oh, that's, a, a Friday that's night. what I thought, yeah. yeah. So... Thursday's open. Pardon me? Thursday would be open. Thursday's open, okay. Okay. Um, that's something we can we're gonna have to um, Okay. Because you have to work faster or <laughs> Forget it perfect. What's that? <laughs> Come that's on, Pete. You know that all the time, right? That's right. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, is there anything doing? else that you need from us <laughs> to write that up? That you're willing to say on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> well, I, I honestly do appreciate it. I appreciate you always take my phone calls when I call. Uh, I appreciate you getting back to me, and I appreciate the work, Pete, uh, you have done. I think you have sat through many of our sessions here since I came on board anyway to uh, kind of stretch things out a bit because I like to make sure that everybody has a chance to have their voice heard. 
I think that's important. And, uh, and just to put things in perspective, so right now we've got a 10 year plan project that's roughly, I'll say eight and a half, I know it's not quite, but we'll say eight and a half million for the total project, engineering right away and construction, and we're talking preliminary costs of 22 to 26 million for, for the project that you see that we did the concept work for that's been laid out uh, in the work that we've done so far. So that gives you a better idea of if there's gonna be conversations with the legislature what you need to be talking about in terms of total dollars. All right, so if we go to the legislature and try to get them to come up with 26 million, that means you could spend the eight million on fixing the drainage, right? Uh, the eight million is probably gonna go entirely towards engineering design to get you a better number than 22 to 26. <laughs> the full eight million? Most of it. How do we say wow? <laughs> Well, I, I'm guessing that when we finish this grant, you're going to be giving us a readout of where all the money has gone so that when people ask what money was spent for, we'll be able to tell them. Yep. Um, so we can go to our expert here and say, how likely is that uh, to happen? So, the good so we have where the 10-year plan was just adopted, approved, signed by Governor Sununu. We have a couple of years to get engineering under our belt to get some good numbers and go back to the legislature and pitch us. The timing's great, actually, quite honestly. In, in terms of going back, uh, it's a significant increase and everybody's gonna... What are our chances of getting byway money? There is no byway program anymore. Okay. What are um, our chances of getting any Fed money? There are certainly, it's the um, build, build program now, the, the, the successor to Tiger Grants. Um, that is, an, is a, a potential funding source at the federal level. How there, do you spell that? Build is in. Just build? Yeah, it's an acronym. I, I can get you the, oh. um, I don't remember what the acronym stands for off the top of my head anymore. Um, it requires a leverage of local or private money or other funding sources that we don't have access to at the state level, mm -hmm. given the way the legislature has funded our capital program. Um, so it's very difficult for us to, to apply for funding, but that, that would be a, um, probably the most independent source of funding that we could go after. Um, there's TAP funding, which helps with sidewalks and stuff a little bit. If we were having a greater conversation here, and I heard zero around the table tonight about transit, I know we had that conversation as part of some of the meetings, uh, we might be able to talk about CMAC dollars to help some of this, um, or to improve or reduce congestion. Um, yeah, so there's, uh, there's a few small, I guess the point being, there's a few smaller buckets within a 10-year program of um, funding sources that, that might help a little bit, but it really is going to be going, having to go after a new source of funding or convince the legislature that this is truly, in addition to the funding they're dedicating to the bridge already, in order to continue that work, this is a, a priority for them over uh, some of the other work that might be in a 10-year plan already. You know, of all of the uh, things that we have talked about from the bridge to Northampton Mine, um, there may be some things that could be done now and not have to wait. Do we have money to do any of those things? Uh, I don't know that, so... Sidewalks in particular. So the, the issue is going to become once you start the design of the project, the environmental permitting and such kind of has to be done as a whole. Um, so you're, you're kind of stuck about really pull, pulling pieces out and doing them much in, in, okay. in advance. So the only thing that we can do right now is to make sure that the sidewalks are painted in, so that people can see them and maybe maybe we can work with crosswalks. Cross 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 I'm sorry, what did I say, sidewalks? Yeah, mm -hmm. we can paint sidewalks oh, too. Going to, I'm just going to hear the <laughs> I know. <laughs> the crosswalks. <laughs> and maybe we could uh, get work to get some people to signal some of, of the areas where there is excess. We may be able to talk more about some of the, the Weeble things that the people have asked about. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of that is coordination between the town and, and the department. That okay. We're always looking, I know both sides are always looking to improve regardless of what happens publicly. Mm -hmm. Behind the scenes we work well on those things. 
And Fran, do, what about the, um, tr he mentioned transit. Do you think the planning, um, Rockingham County, or do you, do you think that's ever going to get re, uh, re, you know, raised again, uh, an off-site uh, parking, intermodal? Do you think it's time to bring that up again? <laughs> well, I think it was the selectman who yeah, put, I'm gonna the, back out put, put the, <laughs> put the, put the, the dagger in that it one. Wasn't, it, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't me. Well, I, it was the selectman. <laughs> so, well, do you, at the planning I, board, do you hear any talk of that? I do not hear anything coming back. I think or the, the message that County? was sent was loud and clear. Well, there's been a change um, at the board of selectmen. <laughs> Okay, so. So Rockingham Planning Commission, which I think you're referring to with Rockingham County, they take, you know, and Dave's here in the, in the audience, they take their cue from their member communities. So what, what comes as priorities out of the Rockingham Planning Commission for transportation projects comes from the town of Hampton and the surrounding areas. So that so comes from the select board, though, correct? It doesn't yeah. come yes. from any other group? And I don't know if you're familiar, but what had happened was that the, the planning commission was doing a study on the one and one on one interchange. I remember that. And, and, and part of that discussion had an intermodal facility in the one and one in a new interchange uh, that would have perhaps accommodated, you know, some uh, park and ride to the beach and, and things like that. And some uh, uh, use to downtown as well, some parking for downtown. And, and that went away at, by the selectmen. So, uh, and it was a very clear message to the to the planning. After it had been worked on for probably ten years, and lately I've heard a lot of people talking about it again. So, for whatever, whatever that's worth. In the meantime, Tech, can you fill me in? Um, are the businesses at the beach doing anything about trying to coordinate the shift shift changes to um, have a bus to bring? We, 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 down? we had a chat. We had something that was set up, but it didn't. It didn't. See, it didn't pan. Not pan out. But talking to um, the selectmen, and and we're trying to come up with some type of parking that's a little further out for the workers, so that it'll open up the at the Island Pass, so it'll open up more parking for day trippers and and people. Um, at the main beach, so we're, we're working on it. I know Rick They're and I have talked, and yeah. Gina and I have talked, and so Rusty and I have talked. They're thinking of giving a, 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 a monetary break to uh, the kids that work at the beach and have a certain area where they can park. Uh, and I heard the chief of uh, that was here, he was the one that is actively involved in it. And a lot of people seem to think it's a good idea. Yeah, I, talked to, I talked to him and Lieutenant Gidley, and we. Uh, I think uh, I think it would really work because that lot is very un underutilized. It's never full, and if we can move these kids or or adult workers, I'm not just saying it, yeah. a little further back. Beach it's not. Workers. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not that. Um, it's really not that far, oh, and I uh, give them a section um, yeah. at a reduced rate. It would definitely improve the amount of parking av available in the main part of the beach. Okay, um, you're back. I have one more question for you. Oh. <laughs> All of that extra literature that I put at the back, will you go through that? I uh, have already. Prior to? Prior to, yeah. I have uh, multiple copies of that document in its entirety, both as a PDF and as a Word document. Okay. Um, and the other thing, uh, the spreadsheet that's in there, uh -huh. there's actually there's three more in that document that go along with that. Okay. It's split up by section. So what you have in there, I don't know if it did print, uh, but that's just the first section. Yeah, that's references. the only one that I got. But if you if you go back in that spreadsheet, there's four or five workbooks that are in there. Each one looks just like the one you had, except it's referenced the instead of section one page number, it's section two page number, section two. So therefore, it may speak to the things that I pulled together on the back. I hope so. All right. Um, anything else on the old business that you want brought up? I just want to say one more thing about that intermodal thing. That was that one spot that was people were against. It's not necessary. There could be another spot that could be picked than the one that was uh, identified. 
which was right off of the highway because the state was doing something there. Yeah, That's okay. what everyone was against, that one spot. There were, are probably other spots yeah, that people wouldn't feel that way. Um, because the residents that live around there were the ones who were also leading the way. Okay. Next. Uh, next. New business? Next meeting. I next. guess date, not the, I mean, we're going to meet. This, I guess I takes the place of our June meeting, or are we going to meet in June? What is the feeling of the, of the uh, commission? I like August 23rd. Yeah. I think August 23rd is a good thing. <laughs> I mean, agree with Bob. Yep. Yeah. Bob's got it. Yeah. August 23rd. <laughs> August 23rd. Can I have a motion? <laughs> Unless we have to. Pull we can always have an emergency. Before you meeting. leave, um, I just want to uh, make sure that the word is there. I believe that um, the consultants for the bridge yep. are planning on having some sort of a public hearing in August, I was told. Okay. So I just want to make sure that it doesn't conflict. I can. Oh, with this meeting? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can check with Jennifer. She's the project yeah. manager for the okay. bridge. Yeah. All right. So, all right. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks. Um, one other thing I wanted to bring up was, uh, oh, I don't know, it's probably about a month ago now, I was approached, uh, received a phone call from a developer uh, who wanted to share one of the projects that he was proposing to, to build. And the reason he wanted to do that was, so he could get the support of the Hampton Beach Area Commission. He has not returned to get that support. So um, I know that there used to be um, an architectural subcommittee or something of this group, I was told. Um, I would like to give thought to about reorganizing that um, with three individuals because we can't have four getting too close to half the committee. Um, and then when someone calls again, I could direct them to those three individuals. Those three individuals could could then look at it and assess it and bring the information and suggestions mm -hmm. and recommendations back to the full committee. Um, and how do you feel about that? I, who were the people before? I think it was Bob and you, wasn't it? Yeah. The two and, and John, John, John was a third. Well, I would like to appoint um, three people, and I would like to appoint Bob Ladd as the person that I would call if I got a call, and then he could set up with the other two guys um, to have the meetings and stuff. And I picked him because he's on the village district, and I know you're out straight with your business, and you've got, you've got plenty to do. Um, I would also like to ask Fran to settle on that because you have the planning board background and stuff? Yeah, that might present a conflict for me though. I mean, reviewing something that we're going to ultimately see and have to vote on. Okay. Um, I'm not sure that I want to be in that position. You know, sitting with somebody and telling them you ought to do this and this and this and then having to deal with it on the, uh, you know, point. A planning board issue. Okay. Because I think what we did before was if someone presented a plan, we went back to the master plan to see if that piece of property fit the fit what it was saying. Well, let right. me just finish appointing then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I got my village district and I need my business people. And now that Fran doesn't want to do that, would you like to take that role? Well I hope my mouth. <laughs> 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 Only if Bob calls me. Do <laughs> you have an unlisted number? Yeah, I do. <laughs> you can block that, though. All right. So I will, I will count on you three guys that if I get, if I'm contacted in the future from any developer that would like to have support from this commission, um, these three guys will hash it out and bring it back to the full committee. So that's two? Three. Three. Bob, Dean, and Bob. Two bobs. Okay. Anything else? All right. So we were not meeting until August. Unless you Unless decide to. All right. So I'll have to um, special meeting or something. Yeah, we'll have to have probably a special meeting. I'd like to have it in early August. 
when is this grant actually ended? The contract with VHB is over August 31st. August 31st. That's what they were joking about, kind of. The 23rd is really tight. If we have a if we have substantial changes for them after that meeting, yeah, it'll be very tight for them well, to turn that around. Well, I just soon have them to meet with them by the fifteenth. Earlier or not, we can August we can move it. You know, it's it's up to us what we yeah. want to do. If we move it up a week, the Thursday before, that would give them a little bit more breathing room. Yeah, I I would be glad to move it to the first of August. Well, not the first, not the first week. The first week. In, I won't at the be beach here the slow. Yeah, mm -hmm. I won't be here the first two weeks of August. All right. 16th would work for me, personally. Is that a Thursday? Yes. I guess a lot depends on how well they heard us. Well, I think, again, they there was nothing new that we presented tonight that they haven't heard and already inventoried and already got an outline form. It's a matter of polishing it and putting it into narrative. Um, and, and William and Robin have been working very hard on that already in anticipation of not hearing much new tonight. So why don't we move it to the 16th? It sounds good to me if you, if, if you can work with them yep. to do that. August 16th. Do it here and then I'll cut it in writing. You will just have to see if this is available. That is the what? what which Thursday is that one? That's the third. Third? Fred, uh, is there usually a meeting here on the third Thursday that you're aware of? Maybe zoning board. Zoning yeah, board. Might be ZBA, yeah. Maybe the police station. All right, well, I'll have to the the district. District. Mm -hmm. Okay. They don't always have a third meeting, though, do they? It's not all the time, no. No, maybe not in the summertime, it might not be. And we'll also want to take a look to make sure this either, neither date conflicts with any the public hearings that are going on for the bridge. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll confirm that now. I'll, I'll have William get back in touch with you directly on if there's a conflict on either day. All right. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. Second. Thank you. Aye. Aye. Thank you very much, guys. Aye. Yep. Every two. That's uh, for 12 years now.